Final Fantasy used to look like this, then this, then this. But for the next game, Final Fantasy VII, you start on the street level of Midgar, pan all the way out, title drop. Now we're gonna zoom all the way back in, but make sure to cut to the train. Captain, switch the song to the live version. The level theme starts rising. You can feel the intense pulse of the level building and can hear it in the song's snare drum, which is deliberately designed to resemble the rhythm of a train's cadence. The ostinato of the piano and the strings mimics the three-note pattern in the snare. Train pulls into the station. Biggs dispatches one guard with a judo throw. Look at him, he don't give a fuck. Ex-soldier leaps off the train, takes out two more guys single-handedly. Pro tip, talk to this guy twice to get two potions. We learn his real name, Ex-Soldier. The momentum of the train is carried into the level, even after Ex-Soldier, Mr. T, and three endgame essential characters dive deeper and deeper into the Mako reactor. Way out of the view of the train, the train's cadence is still with the player. <laughs> You fight the scorpion boss, set up the bomb, mosey real fast while time is ticking down, chat with flower lady. Oh no, we're surrounded, but I ain't got time to mess around with y'all. Jump on the train and get up on out of there. See now, this is how you start a video game. Less than one minute in and you're straight into the action. An iconic opening that sets the player's expectations high. But what I'm trying to say here is, Final Fantasy VII isn't good only because of the fun combat or cool locations or interesting story or Tifa's big old polygons or Sephiroth's barbecue. Chugga 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 chugga. It's a good game because it starts with a train. That's right, today we're looking at trains and video games. Part 1. What is a train? I think we all know what a train is. There are all sorts of trains, more train flavors than there are toppings at Papa John's. Locomotives, your classic choo-choo trains. Freight trains, they're big boy hauling trains. Subways, these are underground city trains carrying people short distances. They're named after a sandwich shop. No, that's wrong! Monorail, sort of like subways, but in the sky. Passenger trains, these are like planes, but on the ground. High speed rail, these are trains that move at high speeds on rails. Commuter rail, taking people in and out of major cities so they can work their super fulfilling and not at all soul draining email jobs and fake meeting jobs. Part two. Video game trains. Trains in video games, it's like when the green Power Ranger shows up. He's not there all the time, but when he shows up, oh, you know this is gonna get real good. And video games implement trains in a variety of ways. Train sim games. The obvious one are games literally about running trains, also known as train simulators, such as Train Simulator, and Train Simulator Classic, and Train Life, a railway simulator, and Train Sim World, and Train Sim World 2. And Train Sim World 3. There's a lot of train sim games, all right? It's a pretty sizable subgenre of sim games. Not to mention games where you place trains in Sim City games, like Sim City and Sim City 2. You get it. Who among us, who among us, has not wanted to be in charge of the train for a little bit, preferably in a non life threatening environment? Along the same vein as train sim games are train as puzzles. Train tracks and train directions are pretty simple to understand from a top down view, which lend themselves well to puzzle solving. Solving. The game Mini Metros is a low-key, lo-fi, cool math train type game where you make a train map that makes sense. So you know, not like some of these real life train maps during rush hour, am I right? Railbound is a cozy little puzzle game where you place train tracks to connect caboose to choo-choo. And the trains are ran by doggies. Hell yeah, dogs with jobs. You could learn a thing or two. Get a job! Train as transportation. All over the world, trains are used to ferry people all over places. It's like real life fast travel. Travel. Subways are traffic freeways to carry people throughout major cities, like the T in Boston and the Metro in DC, but not the Marta in Atlanta, that one doesn't work too good. Just one more lane bro, just one more lane. So some games will use trains as an in-universe way to link segmented levels together, like in Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion. The Deep Sea Metro connects the 80 mini levels, and each level is like a train station named after a classic 80s movie or song. Girl Power Station? My kinda level, nothing bad ever happened here. A few moments later. Oh my god!
Five! Persona 5 has Joker and pals taking the train all over Tokyo, leaking its detailed alleyways and dioramas. Hello, it's my first day of school. I'm looking for the Ginza line. Why is this train station so complicated? No, I won't ask for directions. I'm a gamer. From freight rail to passenger rail, trains are bastions of a functioning society. A working train represents order, stability, while a crash or derail train represents danger and chaos. Chaos. Like the evacuation level in Astral Chain, one of the best ever Switch games. There's a demon flying around causing explosion, and that train got messed up. What? How am I supposed to clean this up? All they gave me was a bucket and a bottle of baby wipes! You've gotta help citizens evacuate while fighting off little demons who are assholes. And then on the escalator, in the middle of the mission, your teammate goes into great detail about how much he wanted to run a train on your dad. You see crash trains even today resulting in major incidents like chemical spills and fatalities, which partially delayed this video as the stories were still developing. Society's going great, you guys. Look, I'm not a congressman. You ain't gonna see me trying to become war criminal and cheap. But I don't know, maybe if rail workers are striking, saying that they're overworked, understaffed, and we need to fix the train tracks, and our economy is heavily reliant on freight rail working properly, maybe we should, oh I don't know, improve the working conditions, pay them more, and fix the fucking train tracks? Hello? Come on Pete Butt, come on Joe Brandon, I thought you were supposed to be the trains guy. Put down the Fortnite, get up on Air Force One, and put my tax dollars to work fixing the trains! Persona 5's insane exciting incident is a huge train accident. That's how you know their world is descending into hell. With its subway themed train hell dungeon that you keep going back to. Speaking of, chugga 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 chugga. There are many superstitions around advanced technology throughout history. You know, people worried about that tranger danger. Maybe it's because they're visually mechanically complex, which can be intimidating to some people. And maybe it's because trains are big, metal, powerful, and hot. Modern trains are capable of 4,000 plus horsepower for hauling. Given this combination of power, fear, and heat, an interesting connection you see in media is train as demon. Final Fantasy summons often pull from various world mythologies. So in Final Fantasy VIII, to represent the <sighs> Glazia Labalus from the Ars Guetia, who's also known as the President of Hell. She, that's a badass train name. They got the Doom Train Summon. He plows right into your enemies and does poison damage, I assume from all that smokestack smog. In Bayonetta 3, you meet the alternate universe Chinese General Bayonetta, Train Onetta, and she summons the T-969, the Charger of the Crimson Rim, the War Train Go On. It's kind of a pain to control to be honest, since trains are not designed for sharp turns, but it can charge its tracks right into them blorms. Choo choo, motherfucker! Back to the top of the video, what if I told you there's a more iconic Final Fantasy train than the one at the start of 7? In Final Fantasy 6, the best Final Fantasy, there's the Phantom Train level. Cyan, Sabin, and maybe Shadow, and maybe maybe a ghost friend end up on the Phantom Train. Similar to Charon ferrying dead souls in the Greek mythology, the train carries the souls of the departed parted to the afterlife, so the gang have to work their way to the front and disembark, since they ain't dead. Well, most of them aren't. They gotta fight the front engine of the train to deboard in a bloody boss battle. Sure, you can end this fight in one second by using a phoenix down on the undead train, or you can do it the fun way where Sabin suplexes the entire train. Hell yeah! Because they do not have tickets, the Sabin squad is allowed off the train, where Cyan has to say farewell to the souls of his dead wife and dead son, who despite all of his sword swinging and quadra slashes, he wasn't able to save from Kefka's poison. Man. Choo Choo Charles is Thomas the Tank Engine, but a demon version. Just a glimpse into my twisted psyche. It's a recent indie horror game where you play as a monster hunter. <laughs> and you upgrade your own choo-choo to fight a demon spider choo-choo. There haven't been a ton of train v train combat games like there is boat v boat or plane v plane, but there is the Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. We made a boat game and it was awesome, so we made another boat game and it was. So this time we need something cooler than a boat. Train. After a dozen some odd walking around Zelda games, the overall exploration in Spirit Tracks is a train game. Riding on rails, upgrading your train with better cannons, the ability to go underwater. Even part of the final boss battles goes Mwamba mode for ultimate train v train action. Train game of the year. Train game of the year. Train game of the year. 
Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Mario Kart 8 is a game all about inertial drifting inside of carts, bikes, and wiggler. And yet, in its highly varied course design, it often goes out of its way to include all sorts of different trains. You got courses like N64 Rainbow Road and Merry Mountain, where they have Golden Sky trains and Santa trains that throw you coins during the race, just like Freight Rail delivers little Timmy's presents for Christmas. Hell yeah. Hauling freight? from great heights. And I'm now realizing that joke only works when written down. <laughs> On Berlin byways, you drive through a train. Not exactly the easiest or fastest way through the lap, but hey, I'm training here. This is what I assume Berliners sound like. Amsterdam Drift and Toad Harbor have trolleys trolling through the city. A trolley is like a one car train, and that's still a train. Did you know? Just like real life, you can bounce off of the top of the trolleys. I only learned that today. Calamari Desert N64 is like a cowboy course. You Dodge the train, you drive on the train tracks, and drive on the train, hop over the trains like a train robbery, and run head on to the train is like a train robbery gone wrong. The underground section of Super Bell Subway has one of the funkiest songs of all time to match one of the funkiest subways of all time. You can drift around the subway. You can get a boosty off the top of the subway. And you gotta dodge the red line. You gotta dodge the blue line. Dodge the red line and the blue line and there's not enough room to not get hit. So you get hit by the train again and again and again. And then blooper blocks your view and you hit the train again. And you try to dodge one train and get hit by the other train. Talk about getting railed. Captain Astronaut is filmed in front of a live studio audience. But this is a great example of train as obstacle. All that freight weight moving at high speed, train's gonna bring the pain. Subway Surfers is exactly what it sounds like. Temple Run for Zoomers. You know, it's like Frogger rotated 90 degrees. You're running around on trains. You're dodging trains. You're surfing on trains. What are these videos? Train as movement. Now this is what most people think of when they hear cool train level. The high stakes of things like chasing a constant speed train or jumping on a moving train can invigorate the excitement of a level with extra motion. Extra locomotion. <laughs> like a Red Dead Redemption, the Yeehaw Cowboy game with train robberies. <laughs> Y'all are stealing money from the mine owner and giving some to the working class, right? Y'all are doing a nice thing, right? Right? Or like in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, wrong side of the tracks mission, where you're chasing a train while on a motorcycle, and all you have to do is follow the damn train, CJ! In Star Fox 64's level Macbeth, you're in a tank and you're chasing down a train, fighting the train, the conductor's all like, STEP ON THE GAS! And I'm all like, do trains have gas pedals? Gas pedal, gas pedal. Train as dynamicism. Is that a word? Everyone loves a good, dynamic train level. Everyone! You start in one zone, and the train carries you to another. In Uncharted 2 on the Sony Station 3, you play as Indiana Jones in big set pieces, so you know they gotta have a train level. The train level in Nepal has you jumping from car to car, gunning fools down while making your way to the front, through a jungle, then a tunnel, then into the snowy mountains in the span of like 10 minutes. It may not be geographically accurate, and nobody cares, because it's awesome. Colonizer Kevin is fighting helicopters, going on a murder spree, throwing people off the train. Look at him, he don't give a fuck. At the end, there's a turret sequence while on the train. Turret sections in games can be kinda cool, you know, like Missile Command, or how I used to play Halo 3 online. But a turret in a moving train sequence is even more exciting than simply being stationary. Hop back over to Bayonetta 3, there's a train turret section where Train Onetta is driving the train and Hetero Onetta is gunning down the giant Journey to the West blorb a monkey. There's a lot of blurbs in this game. I think they ran out of enemy ideas after the first two games. And then after tag teaming champion Chombo, the two get a nice happy reunion and oh, 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 that's not good. Oh no. You know, you know she ain't gonna be a Bayonetta 4. Train as comfort. Hey Gormora, you wanna talk about the Animal Crossing trains while you're on a train? There definitely won't be a ton of background noise from being on a train. Yeah, of course. Great, make sure to stand on the side so I can put the footage in. Sure thing, Captain Astronaut. Full disclosure. Kind of drunk. In the first Animal Crossing game on GameCube, before you even arrive at your village, you start on a train and meet Rover immediately, establishing the game's cozy atmosphere. He'd ask you questions, and depending on how you answered, it, it made your villager 
look the way you were going to look for the rest of the game. Starting the game on the train makes this the best Animal Crossing game. That part was written by Cal. So just take that with a grain of salt. But I do agree that the first game is the best game. Also, if some random dude sat across from me, I'd... Also, if some random dude sat across from me and asked me if my name was cute, I'd probably punch him in the face. Is your name cute? You got a cute name? What is it? But Rover is a cat. We like cats, so he gets a pass. When you travel to other towns by inserting a memory card into the B slot, you would take the train there and run into Rover again. Or Blanca. And you would have a chance to design her face, because that's a normal thing that you do on trains. I know I'm on a train. There's other characters too, like Porter who runs the train, as well as KK Slider who chills on the outside of trains, because he's really smart and doesn't play music inside of trains. Poor Rover, who used to be one of the series' mascots, has been thrusted aside for Isabel to just take over. Now Rover is uh, on, is just on an island at the end of a maze, and he just kind of sits there. The train didn't make another appearance until New Leaf, and has since disappeared from the entire series altogether, being replaced by a plane, which kind of makes sense because we're on an island, and um, aquatic trains don't exist, though those would be pretty freaking cool train as isolation. The thing about being on like a cross country train in the middle of nowhere is that you can't really leave in the middle, which is why a lot of murder mysteries take place on trains. You know the killer must have been someone on the train, the killer can't escape, so there's tension of whether or not they'll kill again, but there's also the countdown of arriving at your destination and the perpetrator escaping. It's also an excuse for your characters to dress up nice, like in the very recent Murder of Son of the Hedgehog. Finally, since being on the train is a pretty big deal, or at least it used to be, so you gotta get your pimp clothes on. In the best Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, Chapter 6's scenario is a train mystery. I won't spoil it because I don't entirely remember what happened, but it does have its boss fight on the roof of a train. Being on top of a train may just be a looping background with a little bit of rail motion, but it does make things more exciting. Trains as just being really cool. Pokemon has had a bunch of trains in it, and in Pokemon Black and White and Black 2 and White 2, instead of a battle tower like in the previous games, Unova had the battle subway where you fight the subway boss Ingo before he became Tumblr's sexy man. Again, simple level design, but that extra mile of battling on a moving object is more exciting than just fighting in an empty room. Remember when these games were good? In Umaragi Generation, the previous level looks like this, so the next level, the chill out on the train to rest, recoup, and reflect level, looks like this. Man. There's the internet list of small quirky qualities games should have to really take them to the next level. Can you pet the doggy? Is there a fishing minigame? Is there something behind the waterfall? Can you violate the Geneva Conventions? Does Shovel Knight appear in the game? And I think it's fair to add one more entry to that list. Is there a train in the game? What was that fourth one? Man, trains are so cool. No, I'm not biased. There are some people who are maybe not huge fans of trains, so they try to make their own type of train replacement and they just end up making a worse train. Hey, you know, sometimes innovation can be iterating on existing concepts to improve performance, not making something new which ends up being worse. But no, it's fine, we added gamer lights to it. If you don't like trains, then fuck you! Honorary train levels. These are levels where there's no physical train involved, but they have the essence of a train level in one way or another, usually in a snaky way. A snake and a train, not all that different when you think about it. Snakey bus is snake from 90s Nokia, but in 3D! You drive a bus, but your bus is not one bus, but several buses connected end to end, like a human centipede, like a train. The more people you deliver, the longer and longer your bus gets, and you have to avoid crashing into yourself. In The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, you fight Puppet Ganon, and in the final phase, he activates his ultimate trump card, Snake Mode. It's like trying to fight a wild train off its rails, and you gotta shoot this stupid ass ball on his tail. It's just straight up luck. This stupid ass game, who designed this bullshit? First try, baby! Shadow of the Colossus, a game where you are unequivocally the good guy. That game has a couple snake bosses. The 13th Colossus, Phalanx, is a flying snake boss that has big train rides. Energy, but in the 
sky. Slow it down by piercing its big sacks. Yum yum. Ride aggro full speed to catch up. Come on, horsey! Jump off the horse, hop under the wing, climb all the way up using your lizard powers. Oh my god, it's really fucking windy up here! Get to the glowy spot, stab that snake, get his ass! Truly exhilarating gameplay. For outstanding performance in the category of big train energy, I choo choo choose you for the greatest honor I can think of. Train level. But then we have the evil twin of the train level, the minecart level. Minecarts are rickety, imprecise, no regard for safety, forged only for corporate greed. Minecarts are the landlord of train levels. Okay, that was a little too mean. If a train is like pregnant Sonic, then minecart is Pregante Shadow. These levels are an uncontrollable mess and are directly in opposition of all the values that train levels stand for. Man, what the hell is this stupid ass bone? Shit. Admit it, how many hours were you stuck on that minecart level in Donkey Kong Country? Wario's gold mine in Mario Kart Wii has big ass minecarts that knock people off the course. Man, it's some bullshit. And they knew it was bullshit too. Cause when they brought back that course in the train game of the year, they thankfully changed it so you get a little boosty from the minecarts instead. Roller coaster levels. A roller coaster is basically a train, but fun. I mean I mean trains are already fun, but these are like more fun. Like in Super Mario Sunshine, you got a pop big cherry balloons and launch missiles at Mecha Bowser. Well, there's no aiming reticle or anything. I, I don't really like this level, don't tell Mario though. But there's also Near Autrama, a game where you play as sexy robots and fight off even sexier robots. There's a roller coaster section at the definitely not at all spooky as hell robot amusement park. Hey 2B, wouldn't it be crazy if we kissed right now? 9S, such displays of emotion are unnecessary for us androids, so shut the hell up or I will fucking kill you. Ha ha ha, classic 2B. B, you're so silly. Sip me, queen. You know, I've been playing a lot of Nier recently. This is one of those games where they'll have a single boss fight that gets its own unique banging bananas boss theme. I like how every song on the soundtrack has a dancing like this, but at various speeds to match the tempo. Sorry, I went on a tangent about near music. I guess you could say I got off track. The spitter boss fight from Zelda Twilight Princess is like a train level and a minecart level and a roller coaster level, and I'm not going to elaborate because I'm talking about Zelda too many times in this video about trains. Anyways, I don't have much of a thesis to this video. Uh, how about if you're making a video game with a variety of scenarios, maybe try to put a train level in there. Be it a confined space with a little bit of shaking and looping background, or maybe be on top of the train with the wind dramatically blowing through the character's hair and capes. Everything is better with a train involved. Boss battle in a castle? Yeah, that's pretty alright. Boss battle on top of a moving train? Now we're talking! Playing a children's card game for your soul? Been there, played out. Now having a duel on top of a moving train? No! Monstacado! Even the Final Fantasy VII remake that changed a bunch of stuff still kept all the trains in the opening. Time travel ghosts? Bro was not cooking. It doesn't even have to be super complicated. Even an old NES game like Mega Man 5's Charge Man stage? He's a train robot. Clearly they were running out of ideas for robot masters and robot mistresses? But on his stage, to show it's on a train, it shakes a little bit with the rails. There are so many trains I don't have time to talk about. Look at that train. 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 Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below with what your favorite train level is and today's comment code word is finance. Comment how much you love finance. And uh, that's it. Video's over.